Hi everyone, I'd like to share a devotion with you this morning and the reading comes from Luke chapter 10 verses 38 to 42. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a village where a woman named Martha welcomed them into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught. But Martha was worried over the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, My dear Martha, you are so upset over all these details. There is really only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and I won't take it away from her. God needs Mary's and Martha's. William Barclay, that great commentator on the Bible, said, There is no right or wrong in this. We are to both pray and to serve. And so friends, I want to take this catchphrase, worshipping like Mary and serving like Martha. And I want to unpack it a little bit for us this morning. Firstly, worshipping like Mary. Mary had a passion for Jesus and she wanted to know him more. The Bible is full of men and women who wanted to know God more. Job said, Oh, that I knew where I might find him. David said, My soul followeth hard after thee. While the Apostle Paul said that I might know him. Do you know God and do you have a passion to know him more? Or do you just know about God? There is a difference. God wants us to know him above all. He wants us to have an intimate relationship with him, a friendship with him. He wants our love, he wants our devotion, he wants our worship. The Bible says that God is seeking those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. And so what happens when we begin to worship God in spirit and truth and to really know Him? I'm reminded of that passage of Scripture in Acts chapter 16, 25 to 34. Remember Paul and Silas? They were in the Philippian jail for their faith in Jesus Christ. They were chained, they were imprisoned. And so here's my translation of what happened. As they were sitting there, Paul says to Silas, we're going to have church. We're going to worship the Lord. And Silas looks at him, you crazy man, look where we are. Look at our circumstances. We're beaten, we're battered, we're cold, we're tired, we're depressed. And Paul says to him, well, if you don't join me, I'm going to worship him alone. And so reluctantly, Silas joins in the worship. And they start to worship the Lord. And as they start to worship the Lord, amazing things begin to happen. Their chains fall off. The prison doors open. Not only theirs, but all the prison doors. And eventually the prison keeper even comes to Christ. Can you believe that? What happens when we worship Christ? Chains of bondage fall off and prison doors open. Do you want to be set free from guilt? Worship Him. Do you want to be set free from depression? Worship Him. Do you want to be set free from grief? Worship Him. Do you want to be set free from anger? Worship Him. Do you have sickness in your body? worship him do you want to be set free from fear worship him do you want to be set free from jealousy worship him have you got friends and family in bondage to drugs to depression to drink to illness to suicidal thoughts have you got children that are uncommitted to Christ worship him not only did God set Paul and Silas, free as they worshipped him, but 
also those in close proximity to them were set free, the other prisoners and the prison keeper. Amazing things begin to happen when we worship Christ, regardless of our circumstances. Miracles begin to happen. God wants our love more than anything else. And you know what? Mary knew this, and so she worshipped Him. Can others see that you love God and that you spend time in His presence? Now in Acts chapter 4, verse 13, Peter and John are before the Sanhedrin. And we read these words. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that they had been with Jesus. Can others say that about you, that you have been with Jesus? If not, perhaps it's time for you to get as hungry and desperate for God as Mary was. And then secondly, serving like Martha. The Bible says that the Son of Man, Jesus, did not come to be served, but to serve. He took on the form of a servant and he humbled himself and he became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Jesus laid down his life for others. He served others. At the Last Supper he washed the feet of his disciples and he said to them, What I've done for you this night, do for one another all your lives. God expects our service and Martha served him friends serve God work for him continue the good work that you've done in the past in fact strive to do better than what you've achieved in the past Martha did the right thing she served God you know it's a pity that many look down on Martha because of this passage and they even downplay the role of practical activity as against prayer because of it. But we know that God does not make everybody alike. And William Barclay has said that people's temperament is better suited to one of the two, either to prayer or practical activity. Both are serving God. Now remember that Jesus, let's remember the context for a moment, Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem to die on the cross. All he wanted was peace and quiet as he prepared himself for that ordeal. Bethany was a calm place, a perfect place, away from the demanding crowds. And Mary understood it, however Martha didn't. She wanted to lay on the best spread that her house could have afford or could offer and she wanted to celebrate Jesus' presence with them but you know what that's not what Jesus needed it was not what was necessary she wanted to serve Jesus in her way without considering his needs and you know sometimes we do that as well sometimes we're guilty of that as well we give people what we think is necessary without ever considering what they really need and then we get upset or we feel unappreciated. Jesus didn't want a big spread. The simplest meal would have sufficed. The implication is that Martha, if she would keep the preparation simple, could then spend time also with Jesus. And I believe that was her big mistake. Will you pray with me? Father, sometimes doing good things for you can distract us from our relationship with you. I pray that we may prefer Mary's place, learning and worshipping at the feet of Jesus himself. But let us also serve like Martha, whom you commend. Let our catchphrase for the rest of this year be, worshipping like Mary, and serving like Martha. In Jesus' name I pray and ask it. Amen.